Welcome to the channel. I want to introduce you to Ronen Krumholtz. Good morning. Good morning. Get it with Dr. Tobia Book. We're going to take you guys on a trail called the Emmaus Trail. Now, some of you may have heard of the Gospel Trail, the Jesus Trail, but this is a brand new trail which is going to take us from the Saxum Visitors Center. Saxum in Latin means rock. So there's lots of rocks, the rocks of Jerusalem, the, the rocks of Israel. And we're going to take you on a trail that takes us all the way down to Emmaus, Nicopolis. Kilometers from the heights of Jerusalem down to the Shvela next to Modi Inn. Enjoy it with us. And please remember to subscribe to the channel. Plenty more places like these off the beaten track sites for you to experience Israel virtually. And when you come visit, take us. We have Disney House Tours, travel agent. You can book anything from... We're the best guides. <laughs> We're the best guides. <laughs> you can book your Somewhere hotel. Australia. You can book your itineraries. We have real professionals in the industry that can give you advice. And Tuvia and myself, guides ready to take you along. So look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you again. Let's go. What you need to look out for is the black trail marker. It starts just off the main road next to Saxum and the first part of the trail is nice and easy. So you can really break up this trail into four stages. We're now on stage one which is from Saxum to the Sculpture Garden. This will become one of the most popular pilgrimage trails in the near future so happy to help with the marketing process and let you know what it's like ha huh. what's so wonderful about this trail is that whoever designed it makes sure that you can do it in comfort so there's this beautiful royal sofa that you can sit down enjoy the view breathe it in and be thankful to be living in the promised land and to be running the footsteps of history. So thank you to the trail organizers. You've outdone yourselves. <laughs> this is good. Come, <laughs> Come and join me. It's amazing. Come and join me, run in. Wow, what a morning. <laughs> what a morning. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Wow. So uh, let me just... Uh, the kingdom. Exactly. The, the kingdom. The kingdom. The kingdom of Israel. Here we are. We're walking uh, the royal steps. Fantastic. So anyway. talking about... Uh, Judah and Maccabee in the times of the Maccabees the Seleucid Greeks had moved into the land and a conflict an ideological battle broke out so we do know about this route these hills that surround Modi and we're getting close to the region of Emmaus and I'm going to ask to it just to give us a little feel Judah Maccabee the third battle against the Seleucid Greeks plays out here How's it? How's it? We really see with the Maccabee story that's still studied in every military academy from West Point to Sandhurst, the importance of strategic thinking. Might isn't always right and size doesn't always count. The Seleucid army was a highly trained professional army with one weakness. And Sun Yat-su in his Art of War starts off with the first rule of war, know your enemy. So if they could form a flanks, they were unstoppable. No army on the planet Earth could stop them. And and the Maccabees knew that. So what they had, the same as in the Boer War, they had the advantage of the terrain, knowing the terrain. So what we're running in right now and riding in right now, if you look around, is extremely hilly terrain and it's only accessible by the single path that we're going on right now, which is where the entire Greek army had to march through on the way to Amiris, where we'll be finishing. And therefore they couldn't form the flanks with the big squares and the spears and the shields and the helmets. They had to march in single file, which made makes this ambush country. And so before they even got to Amaris, the Jews were coming down from both sides of the hills, mercilessly and relentlessly attacked the Greek column. So by the time it eventually got to Amaris, which we'll talk about when we get there, it was severely depleted and demoralized. Use the terrain. A wellspring of knowledge. Just wonderful how the land can just bring out these beautiful stories. So now that is a Greek period introducing the Roman period coming up. We're going to see the Roman milestones. And then of course, we're going to get to the period of Jesus just before the destruction of the temple. We're talking about who knows whether it's zero or 26 of the common era. Do we know exactly what period, what year? 26? 
Mashukaze. So Greeks, Romans, into the Byzantine, the, early Christian, Judeo-Christian period. And the amazing thing about this route is it makes the Bible come alive. The books of the Maccabees, if you read a sentence there, that they were ambushed in hilly terrain, you don't get it. But when you look around here, you see the whole book of Maccabees in three dimensions. And that's the magic about coming to the Holy Land. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. it's, it's, it's a good idea. We've got to get, to get a still of the picture. <laughs> Selfie at the cut. Okay, the views to the coastal plain are opening up. Muddy in the distance. And we're coming up to the end of stage one. Ruins from the times of the Maccabees, as we spoke about earlier. Overlooks the ancient road leading down to Emmaus. The en route. Welcome to Khorvat Metzad. Here we have remains from the period of Alexander Yanai, the times of the Maccabees. We could share a whole lot here, we're just going to give you a glimpse of why this would have been a place to build a fortress. Because it's all about location, location, location. Just have a look at that. Let's see my home. Incredible view towards Modi'in, the city of the Maccabees. But that is the modern rebuilt miracle of Modi'in, the city of the future. And you get a wonderful view looking towards the coastal plain and also north towards Samaria, towards Shomron. And behind us, we've come from this direction, Jerusalem, the east, the green hills. Give us 60 seconds about where we are and what we're doing. So basically, when you want to build a fort like this, besides the three important words, location, 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 you also need uh, the four Ds as well. You've got drink and drive, not together, dining and uh, defense, all in one place. And the incredible thing is, it's all dry construction. There's no cement at all in these stones. Yeah, have a quick look. And you can even see the signature of the Maccabees. If you look at this particular stone over there, you can see there's a boss and a margin, just like when we went to Alexandrium. That's how the that says boss. Alexander Yanaios was here. Margin. That's his signature, all right? So it's pretty amazing that from the time of the Maccabees, they built it over here. And the modern city of Mardin, you can actually see right over there. This is our past, Dame Einbata, and this is our future, Valana Taholech, all in one stop. Wonderful. Whoa. That was 90 <laughs> seconds, we'll give it to you. Okay. Onward and downward, we're now heading in well into stage two, which is from the sculpture garden all the way to the Roman mile markers. See you there. We're running the words of Gospel Luke, where two disciples, Cleopas and the other unnamed disciple, are talking on the route and they happen to come across an unknown traveler and they get speaking about what has just happened in Jerusalem where three days previously was the crucifixion of Jesus and the eventual resurrection so this whole story plays out on the trail that we're walking you get to witness and live the words of the gospel Coming up to the Roman mile markers. Not every day you can see this. How's that? Wow. This is an awesome cluster of milestones. And these milestones mark the 14th mile from Jerusalem on the road between Jerusalem, Emmaus, and Lod. But have a look at this wow. writing on the stone. It's Latin uh, to me. Oh, it's not Greek to me, it's Latin to you. Latin. So uh, let us in. Latin. Okay, well. Being the resident Latin scholar here, <laughs> these milestones often praise the emperor, and the particular emperor over here is Julius Varius Maximus Augustus. Uh, and he was actually one of the last good emperors. Uh, he came just after the bad emperor Commodus, who was the son of. Oh, I would say Marcus, Marcus Aurelius. Aurelius. Right. So, then if you saw the movie Gladiator, <laughs> he who came after Commodus, the bad one, who the who the fake Maximus killed. This guy really, this name really was Maximus. Uh, and basically, this is about 70 years 
before Constantine the Great. So the Roman Empire is still united, uh, it's still pagan, and that's not just idle chatter. Mm -hmm. uh, and about 70 years later, there's a massive revolution when Constantine the Great uh, signs the Edict of Milan and accepts the Eastern Roman Empire as a, a Christian empire known as the Byzantine Empire and we'll talk more about that when we get to the Byzantine Church at the end of this trail. Great, I'm going to cut you short there. So Roman mile markers usually between one and a half to two and a half meters and what are they Square here for? Well. Square bases, exactly. What are they here for? They're here to tell you the distances on the road that you're traveling. So we are stage two done. The distance we're going to run now is between six kilometers. The next stage, stage three, is going to take us along the train route. We're going to go underneath the tunnels. Enjoy it with us. See you at the end of stage three. Quick get a video, sir. Yes! We got it in! The train to Jerusalem just sped past. How cool was that? Right. The section of the train line has a few underpasses. Getting close to Park Canada. The Ayalon Forest coming up. Okay, folks, stage four, the final stage. We've reached the Ayalon Park. Now we should hit some shade, hopefully. Also known as Park Canada. A beautiful green lang on the outskirts of Modian. It's another playground of ours. He has a huge Saxon, a huge rock. Here we go. The Golani Brigade Memorial, right here on the entrance to Park Ayalon, coming from the east. Anyway, but this is Golani. Give us 10 seconds on the Golani Brigade, one of the highly specialized forces in the Israeli army. Golani is actually, it was founded in 1948. Is one of the first brigades that got down to Elat, the famous ink flag. And this particular monument is to the Khan Golani, which is the explosives unit of Golani. Uh, and it's to those who fell in the Second Lebanon War and some of the Gaza operations as well. It's a memorial to the soldiers. And uh, they say in Hebrew, With their death, they gave us all life that we can live a beautiful free life in Israel because the young 18-year-olds uh, who selflessly are prepared to lay down their life for the freedom and the love of Zionism and the Zionist dream, Liot am Chavshi Seinu, to be a free people in our land after 2,000 years. So here we stop and pay our respects to those who paid the ultimate price for our freedom. I'm Israel Chai. The ancient springs in the heart of Park Canada. Beautiful spot, lots of shaded areas, picnic spots. And hopefully we'll find some water. Wow, that would be great. Come and do this trail in the winter months. You'll get to see water in these pools. And there's small little viaducts and aqueducts, which will be full of water. And according to the Gospel Luke, it was at this stage that the disciples actually invited Jesus to come and dine with him. And this is the point where he actually revealed himself to the disciples. Most of the way they walk, they walk not knowing who they were with. So the end point is very near the ancient village of Emmaus, which during the Greek period changed to the name Nicopolis. Polis meaning city. <laughs> there we go. There you have it, folks. The bottom of the Ancient Springs Trail in Park Canada. I'm going to walk on water. Oh, good? Yeah, good, come in. 
fantastic. It's really not deep. Ah. <laughs> ah. Lovely. Woo. Fantastic. Run in. Thank you for the inspiration. It was a magnificent Thank trail. You for your so 19 kilometers. Morning. Uh, tough one. Tough one. one. Definitely had a few surprises Amazing. en route. First of all, people should do it during March, April, October, November. That's the best season. The route is amazing. But keep yourselves between five and six hours for an average walker yeah. and you can yeah. get it done. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed that little taste of the Amaus Trail. Uh, we're going to leave you with one more spot at the end. We're coming up to a beautifully preserved Roman bathhouse. Check out the link above. We did a tour here during the festival of Hanukkah, the times of the Maccabees, and you can learn all about this magnificent bathhouse right next to the ancient town of Emmaus, Nicopolis. Just 300 meters left. Okay, stop the clock. And there you have it folks, we have done the Emmaus Trail all the way from Abogosh down here to ancient Emmaus, Nicopolis. This wonderful experience of a new pilgrimage route in the Holy Land in the footsteps of the Gospel of Luke. Check out the actual chapter, you can read it yourselves and get excited about coming and getting your spiritual injection in the land, be it if you're a Jew, a Muslim, a Christian, a Buddhist or any person of faith. The land is open for you. We're standing in the Basilica, facing the apse, which means we're facing east. And we've made that journey all the way down the trails from Abu Ghosh on the Amaus Trail. And we'll close our vlog here and talk a little bit about where we are historically putting you into the picture. Okay, so back to the Maccabees. This is where the ultimate battle happened, the one we mentioned before earlier in the vlog, where in a battle that is again studied by military experts around the world, the Jewish army set up a camp here, lit fires, and the Greek flanks marched towards the camp. Little did they know there was all a feint. The actual main army of the Jews had actually gone round and they attacked the flanks on the Achilles Hill from the back. And that's how they won the famous Battle of Hermaeus. So that was back 2,200 years ago. Fast forward, fourth century, Queen Helena, uh, Constantine's mom, came to Israel. This is where she had a vision that Emmaus was of the actual New Testament itself. And because she was the Emperor's mom, wherever she had a vision, that's where they built the churches. That's why the whole foundation of this church, you can see over here, is actually a Byzantine foundation. Huge, massive blocks of dry construction, the bottom part of it. Then, of course, in the spirit of toleration with the Islamic conquest, they destroyed the Byzantine church church and built a mosque and in the spirit of uh, religious uh, tolerance again the crusaders came along the end 11th century destroyed the mosque and rebuilt a massive crusader church which is basically what you can see today about a thousand years old on the foundations of the byzantine church this is a very special place for christianity for basically from the fourth century the same period as the holy sepulchre this is venerated as the site of emmaus and just over the hill over there is a place called latrun which is where another crusader car so it was a book called Chevalier de la Trune, which is where, according to Christian uh, faith and belief, the thieves who were crucified on the side of Jesus were from as well. So this whole junction over here is an amazingly important site for Christianity. It's also a strategically important site. And before Christianity, uh, this junction also contained the Roman city of Emmaus. If you look at our vlog back from uh, Hanukkah, you see there's also a massive Roman bathhouse and a buried Roman city all around this church. So folks, there's plenty to see, there's plenty to learn, there's plenty to experience. Come and get your own spiritual injection and join us on the journey. Again, thank you Ronen one more time for inspiring us to do this trail. Thank you guys. And awesome. we look forward to sharing it with you. Please look in the description, we'll give you a full detailed uh, idea of what this trail is all about. And we can introduce you to Monello, who is uh, really the injection behind this trail for pilgrims to come to the land. 
So thank you for following on. Subscribe, drop a comment, do what you need to do. See you in the next one. We have returned to Saxum just to give you an idea of how wonderful this place is. We're going to introduce you to Manolo, Manuela and Almodena, and the director and the business, buyer. business manager of the site. Um, I'm going to post the link in the description so that you can learn about Saxum. But we are here for a few minutes and we're just going to get a feel. What is the purpose of this place? So the main purpose of Saxum is to better understand uh, the pilgrimage, the history of uh, the Holy Land, the New and the Old Testament. The summary of all the history, starting from Abraham until uh, Adrianus' time, until Elia Capitolina. And then inside the building you have uh, the movies, uh, 3D reconstructions of the temple, of uh, different churches in Israel. Uh, yes, we so can to sum up everything in one hour, one hour fifty, more or less. Wonderful, so let's show you around the site. Here you can see the timeline begins from the period of Abraham and you can walk the history of the land and the floor, beautiful limestone floor with the map of the ancient Near East. And in the middle of the courtyard, you got this beautiful pool which depicts the Mediterranean Sea. And all of the writings on the roof are outside of the biblical text. For example, here you can see Masada, the capture of Masada by the Romans. And then you enter into the interactive part of the museum. Just have a look how the floor continues. And here you're zooming in onto the map of the land of Israel. You can see where my foot is now is the Dead Sea. Intimate footsteps as you see the cities and the historical biblical towns. Um, leading into, of course, the Byzantine period. You can see the museum is based on an interactive experience. And here you can see Jerusalem and actually life in the temple. Now, this is something that many people are fascinated by and really play around and get to know what the temple used to look like during its time. Can you give us a quick show as to how this works? And then you can see different parts of Jerusalem, Mount Zion. You can even enter into the temple. And there you can see the Ebn Ashtia, the foundation stone, which is the most sanctified part of the temple. So it just shows you, you can really play around. And if you want to have an in-depth knowledge of uh, your experience in the pilgrimage, we do recommend you come here at the end of your trip and you can really, really then explore the things that you've already seen. Um, but wow, it feels like you need a lot of time here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's go and check out the view. We love views. Have a wow. look at that. Wow, wow, wow. So folks, that's what you did with us this morning. We trust you enjoyed that. So it's a place that you can come to either before your trail or after your trail. You can visit the site and learn about the history from a Jewish perspective from the times of the period, as well as the early Judeo-Christian period, the period of the gospel. Thank you again for following along. Please remember to subscribe to the channel. We'll take you places you've never been before, new places that are on the tourist track, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you for following along.